if this video does not fire you up, then absolutely nothing will. If you need a shot in the arm, if you need a, a shot of adrenaline right now, this is going to be the video that you want to watch because I just literally just go off on this group of agents in New York uh, about the state of the market, about what you need to be thinking about moving forward for the rest of the year. This is your time to shine. I'm not going to waste any time right here. I'm going to dive right into it. Enjoy. But man, like visualize where this thing is going. You could be making a million dollars a year in the next like three years if you go all in right now instead of sitting around saying, well, nobody's doing anything. So what's the point? Go find a property. Go talk to sellers to find your buyer a property. You're doing half the job. You're just finding 50% of the deal. I cared about one thing, connecting buyers and sellers. That's it. It, it works for some people, but for me personally, it's garbage. I'm trying to get to know somebody and see what it is they want to do for the rest of their life and help them do it. After our learning all that, it still took me six years of 15 hours a day to get to 100 deals a year. You're not going to get to a million bucks a year if you don't have an assistant handling everything on the back end. Putting stuff in MLS, setting up all the showing for agents wanting to show your listings, setting up showings when you want to show property, uh, you know, getting pictures done, transaction coordination, like all that stuff needs to be delegated 100%. I've invited uh, my business partner from Orange Beach, Alabama, uh, Ricky Carruth. And this is a special treat for everybody because normally Ricky and I would say, hey, go listen to his videos on YouTube. But I wanted Ricky to come in and give you a shot in the arm of inspiration today. And if you have any Q&As for, uh, for Ricky, uh, here he is. Hi, Ricky. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Morning, dude. Y'all look hungry. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Ricky. What's up, Ricky? Y'all look hungry and focused. Yeah. Thanks. That's right. Looking serious. <laughs> uh, no, no, absolutely, man. Good to see you, Joe. Um, yeah, let me just tell you what I think and then take some questions and that'll be good. So <clears throat> like guys, I, I, number one, I don't know. I don't know quite exactly what you all do or what you think or what's going on, but it's, it's not, this isn't really, this isn't rocket science. You talk to people, you help them buy and sell real estate, right? That's just the basics. It's kind of like poker. You can learn the game in a couple of minutes, but it takes a lifetime to master. Um, you know, you lose your ass for years and years and years. That's just the name of this game. That's why most people quit. But right now we're in this really interesting place where the market has retracted a whole lot in terms of transactions, but prices have held solid. And we're going into the winter. We're already in the fall and things have already slowed down even more. I, bet, I was talking about this months ago, like, like you, <laughs> you better be going all in right now to squeeze that summer market for everything it's got because it's going to get slower in the fall. And if you're struggling now in the summer, you're really going to be sucking wind in the fall. Now, the the message is go all in because what you do between now and January 31st is really going to dictate your 2024. You see, every year you stair step your income based on what you do in the off season. Um, you know, if you expand your database during the off season, then your next selling season, you're going to do more than the last selling season. Then it slows down and you go back to prospecting. You can't really prospect all year long. You know, I'm a realist. I'm very realistic. And I, and I know that when I was, when I was just beginning my business, I could prospect all year long. But once I picked up some steam, I didn't, I couldn't prospect and sell like I was busy closing deals you get busy and then you feel bad because you didn't make the calls and you're not building your business you're like oh no well at when you get to that stage the way you do it is you're okay you know selling your ass off in the summer making that money but then in the fall switch over to the back to like hardcore prospecting the the, the future top producers and the guys that have really and girls that have really made it they understand how to flip that switch to 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 maximize, right? Maximize through the yearly cycles, and then you maximize through this ten year cycles. We're in this ten year cycle, and what I did with the last ten year cycle, which was that two thousand eight situation, got me to where I was selling a hundred properties a year. But it was like six years later. But it was from what I did during that time. Right now, you're, the work you're putting in is going to put you in position to do a hundred deals a year or whatever you know, in three, four, five years. 
but you can't see that because you're just thinking about 2023, 2024. It's like, great, have a great 2023, 2024. But man, like visualize where this thing is going. You could be making a million dollars a year in the next like three years if you go all in right now instead of sitting around saying, well, nobody's doing anything. So what's the point? I mean, that's that's loser mentality. I hate to say that. I mean, <laughs> what, what do we get in the, this business to do? You know, we got in this business to crush it. I hope you got in this business to just crush it. So just go crush it. What does crush it mean? It means talk to people all day long, whether it's through video and social media or cold calling or door. I don't care what you do. Just go do something. Talk to people. Don't chalk it up every day to I'm getting my systems in place or I'm making videos or I'm, uh, you know, making my business cards, getting my website just right. All that stuff that don't make you a dime that doesn't matter. Dude, when I started, I didn't have a website or business cards. I was calling, sending mail, and doing emails with no website, no nothing. I didn't have anything. I, but I knew one thing. I needed to talk to people to help them buy and sell real estate. That's our job. And the funny thing I see nowadays is agents doing half the job. They're coming in and they have a buyer and then they're waiting on another agent to list a property their buyer might want. Go find a property. Go talk to sellers to find your buyer a property. You're doing half the job. You're just finding 50% of the deal. You know, our job is to connect buyers and sellers. You're just doing half the job and then sitting around. You list a property. You list a property. You put on MLS and then you sit around waiting on another agent to sell it. Go sell it. Go find a buyer for the property. Do your job. So that's kind of like where, where I'm at right now is why aren't we going out and doing our job? It's almost like hard work is kind of like a lost art or some shit. You know, like wh where'd all the hard workers go? You go to McDonald's and you go to these places and you look around and you're like, man, these people are just lazy. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but it's just like laziness is this new like epidemic in the in the world now. Um and I'm I'm uh, I'm not going to live like that. There's there's a job that needs to be done, you know, and people sit around saying, I want to make a million dollars. I want to crush it. I want to do all this stuff. But they're not willing to just go do their job and talk to people and help them buy and sell real estate. It's nuts. You need to start categorizing your prospects right now. OK, with these high interest rates, the only people buying and selling are people that have to. And what you're doing is you're tr trying to turn every prospect into a deal. When they're telling you they they you know they might do this if they want to or they if they could do this they would if they could find a place they would if interest rates weren't high they would, but those people don't have to they're just saying they would if they could. Quit trying to turn those into deals today. Save those people for a rainy day when the market rebounds. See those people that don't want to do stuff right now or act like they would if they could. They're just telling you what they want what you want to hear, and, you, and then you're spending time on them when you should be spending time on people that need to buy and sell or looking for people that need to buy and sell. That's your only clients right now. People that need to buy and sell and investors, right? Investors buy no matter what the market's doing up, down, sideways. Investors are buying and selling. I'm buying properties every month. I'm an investor. So people that need to buy and sell and investors, right? The people that, that would, if they could, those are going to be the people that triple your business in three years. OK, if you can create those relationships, put them on your weekly email, whatever you do to stay in touch with people and let that snowball build and let that database grow. That's where your business is going to explode over the next couple of years. But we're just so focused on a closing that prospect that's not ready to do anything and then b not really putting anything in place to stay in touch with anybody we ever talk to. This again, this this is just so simple to just for me to tell you, like just the basics here. Talk to people, make friends with them, stay in touch forever. Right. I mean, we all know this. Right. <laughs> I mean, but why aren't we doing it? You know, do a weekly email. Go to start my weekly email dot com. Super simple stuff. Four week, you know, template system. You know, if your thing is social media. Use it as a platform to get to people to start conversations. You know, don't just do it and then, you know, like use it to engage with people. 
to try to connect and get into conversations, digital conversations, in-person conversations, phone calls, you know, stir the pot, talk to people. You know, if cold calling is your thing, cold call till your ears bleed. If you door knock, door knock till your knuckles bleed. I mean, that's what it takes. And right now is a little slower than normal because we're in this down year, plus it's the fall. Perfect opportunity. Guys, every time the market retracts, that means there's fixing to be an explosion. This little 4 million transaction year we're having as a country tells me we're fixing to have an explosion. Um, when's it going to happen? I don't know, but I'm going to prepare. What does that mean? I'm a squirrel. I'm going to be gathering nuts. <laughs> like I'm like I'm storing for the winter so that when when this thing explodes, I got plenty of clients calling me. You, you, you prospect so much that eventually your prospects start cold calling you. And that's what happens. But nobody wants to put the work in. It's like any everything between you and a million bucks a year is a thousand, thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's it. So how quick are you going to go through that thousand, those thousands of conversations, right? Are you going to do it over the course of a couple of years or are you going to do it over the course of a couple of decades? It's your choice. You can just trickle little conversations here and there. You know, and just drag this thing out forever, or we can get this done right now and get to that million so that we can move on to bigger and better things like buying rental properties. <laughs> you know, that's what you need to be doing. Using this as a as a you know a catalyst to to get to some real passive income. Man, nobody wants to, you know, be in this rat race forever, but this is a great vehicle to understand the business, crush it, make a ton of money, and then invest so that we can get up out of here. You know, and go do go live our life the way we want because we only live once. You know, I mean, I know two agents that literally died making calls. They they knew they were dying. They were they were in their they 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 died from old age. They knew they were dying when they got the word they were dying. Guess what? They were still in the office making calls every day, and we're like, "What the hell is going on?" Well, like they didn't do anything to like put their life together where they. So they were making calls to 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 try to make as much as they could to leave their family as much as they could before they died. Made calls up to the point they couldn't even get out of bed, died three days later. That's not how I'm gonna live. I'm not gonna live calling for sale by owners till I'm till I'm, you know, till I die. It's not gonna happen. But you got to get on it now. You gotta you, you gotta have all those conversations now. Otherwise, if you trickle it out and then you don't invest then you will be making calls to the day you die. So that's what it is. Um, you guys need to focus on the four most important activities, right? The, the highest priorities are not making calls, by the way, right? It's showing property, going to list appointments, writing, and negotiating offers. Phone calls actually lands right up under those four things. If you're doing these four things eight hours a day, you're the most successful agent in the in the world, in the history of the world. If you do those four things eight hours a day, nobody's doing those four things eight hours a day because you got to do the things that get to those activities, right? And then you got to process. You got to do all this and that, da, da, da. You know, but phone calls is the highest priority if none of, none of that's going on. If that's going on, then that's the priority. And then phone calls, right? And then your marketing and your videos and all that stuff. It's not a tough game. It's tough to like grind it out for free and not making shit for a while to get to the, to get to the good part. You know, that's tough, but you can, you can drag that out as long as you want, or you can knock it out right now. You know, the real like future top producers, they, they understand this game is stages, you know, and we're all in a stage and the really good ones, they just bust right through those stages. Oh, phone calls. Oh, I'm scared of calls. Okay. Boom. Let me make them. Okay. Now I'm not scared. Okay. Now how, what do I say? How do I say it? How do I read people on the phone? They just bust right through that versus most, a lot of people just get stuck in the first one. I'm scared. I'm not going to do it. So they get stuck right there in that stage. Bust through the stages all the way through to the very top. And then and then turn around and look back and say, OK, that wasn't so bad. What's next? Because when you make a meal a year and then January 1st hits, your, your, your income from the year goes from a meal to zero. And now you say, oh, shit. I got to climb this million dollar mountain again. It's daunting, ladies and gentlemen. So right now is is really that that key moment. You're going to look back and say, I wish I would have went all in. I wish I just would have went all in and just made calls eight hours a day. 
you know, made videos, whatever you do, but, but like conversations. So I hope you guys hear that and maybe it, you can apply that to your business and maybe give you a different perspective and, you know, outlook and direction to visualize because this thing is going to blow up. Like there's too many sellers. Listen to this. There's too many sellers who hate their home right now. They're locked in with a low interest rate and they hate their home. And hate's a strong word. You know, they don't like it. They need an extra bedroom. They, you know, want to be on the other side of town. They want to be on the water. They, whatever. They don't want to be where they are, but they can't move because of interest rates. Do you know what that means? That, that, that's the definition of pent-up demand. Sellers want to sell badly. They just can't. Whoever creates the most relationships with those sellers who, who, who can't sell but want to, that's who's going to triple their business, quadruple, 10x their business over the next two to three to four to five years. But if you just sit around saying, oh, well, they're not doing anything, so what's the point? What's the point of calling them? Then you're not going to be the one that 10x's your business and you know hits a mill in the next three years. Cool. Let's do some Q&A, see what's up with y'all. Thank you, Ricky. Um, I have a question. So thank you for putting into perspective the fact that, you know, there is a future in this and that there is stages in it because, you know, I'm I'm someone that has personally been stuck in the past and, you know, understanding that there's stages to this and understanding that you, like you said, have to knock it down. You have to make the calls. You have to do what you have to do. <laughs> understanding that. What do you think your biggest takeaway that you've ever learned in real estate is if you were just to summarize it in just one lesson uh don't listen to anything number one um when i was coming up um i didn't have a social media account i didn't know what the interest rates were no idea i didn't even know the stock market crash in 2008 and i'm talking about all the way to 2017 when i started coaching and creating content, I didn't have social media. I didn't know what interest rates were. I had no idea what what the 30-year fixed was at any given time. This is when I'm selling 100 properties a year. I started selling, I, the first year I did 100 deals was 2014. I had no idea what interest rates were. Didn't care. Could care less. I cared about one thing, connecting buyers and sellers. That's it. I was focused on one thing, connecting buyers and sellers. And I'm not saying don't be on social media or create content because I think you should. I'm just making a point of the, the depth of the focus, right? Um, I was only focused on one thing, help enough people buy and sell real estate to make a million bucks. That's it. I didn't care about anything else. Uh, until I conquered that, nothing else mattered. I didn't have money to invest. I didn't... Uh, you know, have time to research markets and, uh, you know, I, whatever little research I did was what I did to, to, to look up properties for people, whatever I was seeing in the field as I was showing property and whatever I looked up to put into my weekly email. That was it. I didn't know anything about national numbers or none of this stuff. So I think it takes a real high level of focus. You know, even thinking about what you're going to do after is, is actually a, distraction. I'm going to make a million bucks and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to invest in properties and stuff. That's even a distraction, even though that's what you should be thinking in the back of your head, you know, invest, 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 buy passive income. But um, that can even be a distraction, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, at the beginning, I was just trying to sell properties and I lost everything doing that. It was just backwards. And until I realized that it's not about the property, it's about using the property as an excuse to get into a conversation with someone to see if you connect for the rest of your life, to try to make lifelong friends with your clients, then until I got that, then I my business was just dead. Because when you make lifelong friends with your prospects and clients, your business snowballs. 
And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because they do repeat business with you. They refer people to you, but then the referrals do repeat business with you. They send you referrals. Now you're getting referrals of referrals of referrals and all this repeat business. So it's like a spider web and it just, it's a snowball when you build it like that. But if you're just in sales where you're just trying to sell the property instead of using the property as an excuse to talk to someone to see if you connect with them short and long term, when you're just trying to sell the property, then you don't really make that connection then they're the prospects like they could take you or leave you, you know, and they'll go use another agent. They might use you again, but you know, you're just a dime a dozen. But when you go to the depths of, you know, really connecting on a deeper level with them. And what does that mean? It means asking questions and being genuinely curious about their situation. You know, why, 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 why understanding why they want to do what they want to do when they want to do it, how they want everything and then continuing to ask it's like okay oh really blah 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 like you you go deeper and deeper and deeper um that's that's where like people realize wow this person really cares they're asking me all these questions um so i think you know a super high level of focus and then understanding you know when you call a uh, circle prospecting uh geo lead you're not calling about that property. You're using that property as an excuse. When you call an expired, you're not trying to list that expired. You're trying to use that property as an excuse. Most of the expireds I represented, I represented them as buyers. You know, because I just get into a conversation, end up figuring out what it is they want to do, come to find out they don't want to sell that property. They want to buy this property over here. Or they're looking for this or looking for that. And I'll, I'll sell them something, not list their property, but represent them as a buyer. Because I'm I'm open. When I, I'm, I'm trying to just listen. I'm using the property as an excuse to get into a conversation to listen about what they want to do. I'm not focused on trying to set the appointment, sell that property. Here's why you, you know, all that stuff. To me, it it works for some people, but for me personally, it's garbage. I'm trying to get to know somebody and see what it is they want to do for the rest of their life and help them do it. So focus and a high level of genuine curiosity around, you know, when you're calling a Zillow lead, I'm not trying to sell the, the house that they're inquiring about. I'm trying to use that situation to get into a conversation. So, hey, I see you were looking at this house online. Tell me what's going on. You know, I expired. I see you were trying to sell this house at one point. Whatever happened with that? I'm trying to just spark something that creates a, a real conversation, not just a scripted, you know, trap you know, or, or whatever the case may be. So I think focus, you know, deep conversation, deeper conversations, not just surface level, and then have systems in place to where no one you ever talk to ever forgets who you are, you know, and that's where the weekly email just simplifies the whole process. Gotcha. Um, I have a, a, a question. So, you know, it sounds to me, obviously, over time, you're developing your your social guilt skills, sorry, and building rapport with these people. And I'm just wondering, you know, if you were reading uh, specific books, or for example, if you ever like, were utilizing NLP or any of that kind of material, or if you're just doing it all natural, just by, you know, practice. Just practice. Um, I don't know what NLP is. I've heard about it and I'm sure it's, I, I think I understand kind of what it is, but I've never really looked into it. Um, I served tables for a while at a restaurant that helped me tremendously. Uh, also roofed houses all growing up with my dad. Those two things really helped me a lot because the roofing was like, you get up and you work your ass off all day, like real work. Um, and so that taught me like, the hours you're supposed to work, right? And a lot of people don't even understand that. And then the serving the tables really improved my like my social communication skills, you know, with people I didn't know. And I used that as exercise, you know, like I was really in that fixing to become an agent when I was serving tables. And then when I lost everything, I went back to roofing and serving tables. And it was fun for me because I was like, you know, I was really, you know, ha getting into it with the with the serving. There were a couple of books that I read that were really generic books about like, uh, you know, how to talk to people, how to make friends, uh, stuff like that. I don't remember any of them. It was a long time ago. I read about 100 books back when I lost everything. 10X Roll, Slide Edge, Compound Effect, 
uh, you know, all the classics and then a bunch of just generic ones that I found. But um, I think you should read. You should be reading your ass off um, and just developing whatever skills you can, you can, you know, develop, you know, books are just like the key, man. Like you, <laughs> it's, it's incredible what you can, what you can take out of books and apply it to your life and everything. But, um, but, uh, but I'll be honest, like most of it, was just practicing, you know, and like, I didn't do any role playing. I didn't ever have anybody role play with. I was literally by myself, wherever I was, I was in an office by myself everywhere. I didn't have like a group or like agents never happened. Um, I, uh, I would practice on prospects, you know, I mean, I realized pretty early on that I can never call every single property owner, which means business is unlimited forever. Because even if I did call every property owner in my market, I'd have to turn around. They change their mind every five minutes. So you can't call, you know, everybody every five minutes. It's just unlimited. It's an unlimited abyss. So um, I knew that, and I never even called anybody twice. That's another, like, fact is I never, I saved all these phone numbers of all these subdivisions and condo complexes that I was like, I'll save these for a rainy day. I might call these back one, one day. It never happened. Uh, never got around to it in today's world. And of course I was like, I was, it was literally a notebook. It's like notebook paper. Like I, it's, it, it's actually, you see this door right here? Like mm -hmm. there's a box in this door with every number I ever called, uh, on, on, on real paper. But, um, today you've got the dialers, you've got all the stuff like digital and stuff. You can like click a few buttons and like auto dial. Like I didn't have any of that. So you can call people back uh, and go through subdivisions like in a matter of minutes, a lot easier nowadays. So I'd probably do that nowadays. But yeah, like these scripts and stuff that I have on my website, I developed that those are just unique to me. And it's just I never, I didn't read any of that out of a book. It's just trial and error, you know. Um. So like I said, it's the stages. OK. And like. You may be in the stage where you're trying to figure out how what your tone needs to be, you know, and, and like the speed of voice and like how to make people feel comfortable with you and stuff. That might be where it sounds like where you are. And there's no like magic pill that's going to make you all of a sudden great at that tomorrow. It's just it's going to take time and practice. It takes a long time, man. It, I got in an O2. I lost. I sold my last condo in 05 didn't sell anything between 05 and 08 08 i get back in and that at that point i had pretty much learned a good bit of what i teach nowadays okay that like it took you know you know, you know making it losing it and then realizing what i did wrong and how to really build the business right after our learning all that it still took me six years of 15 hours a day to get to 100 deals a year six years you know, it's just like I made it, lost it, came back. And then six years later, after all that, I had to have my first year of 100 deals. And it took me 15 years total from the point that I started real estate till the year I made a million bucks in a year, 15 years. And like people are like, I didn't sell. It's, I, you know, I'm three months in. I haven't sold anything. It's like, shut your ass up. You know, or I'm two years in and I and and I'm only making a hundred thousand years. It's like, oh my God, you're crushing it. You know, it's like fuck. Right. Cause what is it? 90% quit in the first year anyway. Yeah, and that's a whole nother conversation, you know, that whole that whole deal. Yeah. I mean, that's why I was partially just curious, but as you said, you you're you're not really like reading those kinds of books, but um I was just curious. I did I, read some books. I did read. Oh, no, I know. I, I just been about NLP specifically. I don't know what it is, honestly. I've heard about it, and I think I have an idea, but I, yeah, I mean, I'm just naturally built a skill through whatever reading I did and talking to people. I'm an introvert. I have no interest in being in crowds or talking you know making videos not my thing um but i you know develop these skills you know as if i'm a tradesman you know what i mean like this is my trade learning how to talk to people making people feel comfortable with me working hard making sure that you know they're taken care of so that's the way i look at it yeah no it's good 
So thank you. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, so I'm gonna follow up with a question, Ricky. Um, so you said you're an introvert. So how did you develop that to be more of an extrovert to be social, just making the calls every day, being disciplined and consistent, and you just well, I'm not. Private? Well, I'm not. I'm not sociable. I'm not um whatever you just said. I'm not. Right. Okay. I don't look at the calls as being extroverted. Right. I look at that as that's my job. Okay. My job is, like I said, I look at this as a trade, as a skill. My job is to talk to as many people as I can to make them feel comfortable with me and then help them, truly help them. That's my job. Right. And that's the way I look at it. Um, like I said, 99% of my call sessions were in a dark, <laughs> were in a dark room by myself. Right. I didn't want anybody hearing me make calls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, um, so, you know, when I'm making videos and stuff, dude, I mean, honestly, if you ask me, my videos suck, you know, like you seem lively. You started off with a nice pitch and, you know, talk about the rates and oh, like you have a lot of energy on your videos where you seem like, you know, you would think. Because you captured me in the first few seconds talking about different rates and what's going on. I told you, I told you. But so. again, but again, I, that's my job. Yeah. My job is to get your attention and to bring you some value. Right. And I'm doing that by myself, looking at my phone. I'm not in front of a crowd. Now, I mean, I go speak and I'll go tell jokes and I'll make the audience laugh and cry and everything else. Uh, but again, that's a skill that I developed, you know, it wasn't natural. And so I say all this to give you guys inspiration and hope that it doesn't matter if you aren't great at calls or don't like it or don't want to publicly speak or aren't good at videos or whatever the case may be. Right. I'm in Alabama. I grew up in a trailer roofing houses. If I can do this, it, I promise you anyone can do this. This is not, you know, this isn't the success in this realm, whether it be real estate or even just social media in general, is not reserved for the few. Okay. It's not. It's not like there's only the people at the top. And, you know, no, it's reserved for the people that are willing to work for it and work to get better every day. No one at the top, very few people at the top are just natural, you know, at whatever it is you see them doing. You know, Ryan Serhant, like he wasn't a natural at what he's doing now. Mr. Beast, not a natural. Like if you watch all these all these guys journey from day one, like you'll realize, like if you go back to the early, early days, you'd be like, oh, my God, you know, it's it's bad. So, you know, everybody wants to compare themselves in their bad days to people that are at in their great days. It's like, no, they started out right where you were, right where you are. Anybody else have a question for Ricky? Ricky, I have a question um, about your investments. Do you do single family homes or multifamily homes? Both. Okay. Where I do, do you find, family. sorry. Do single family duplexes, fourplexes, um, apartment complexes, commercial. I like small commercial buildings. I've got several commercial buildings, like 1,000 to 3,000 square feet. Um, I just bought five new construction homes that are brand new. I just bought a little 1962 bedroom that we remodeled. I just bought another little tiny thousand square foot office building. Uh, I've got three acres under contract that I can build about 30 or 40 apartment units on that I'm probably going to build. So <clears throat> I'm doing a little bit of everything, but it's all local. It's all right here in my backyard. The three acres is literally two miles from my house. Those five new constructions are literally like two miles from my house. Um, so that's kind of what I like. I don't, I, I've got a partner here and there on some of them. Most of them I own myself. But um, you have a property manager, right? What's up? You have property managers? No, I just, I do it. All of them? 
Yeah, it's pretty easy because nowadays there's apps that the renters actually apply on and pay their rent on. And so it's super easy. You know, they pay their rent. That app, uh, you know, makes them pay a late fee. Um, you know, if they're late, you know, I can go on the app and see who hasn't paid. It's it's like before the app. Yeah, I was like, OK, let me think about getting a property manager. I'm getting too many properties here. But with the app, it makes things so easy. I just scroll through and see who hasn't paid, you know, reach out to them, see what's up. They call me if something's wrong and I get a contract, plenty of contractors, you know, to uh, to handle all that. It's it's not a it's nothing crazy. Right. It goes back to hard work being this lost art. Like, guys, like you realize, like I edit some of my YouTube videos and I post everything. I answer every DM myself. Every comment is me. Um, What like when I was selling 100 properties a year, I showed every property like I didn't have a buyer agent. Right. Um, You just I could go on and on and on here. Like I do all this stuff, you know, it's not a thing for me. It's, you know, I think, I think we're in this world where everybody's trying to get out of doing stuff. How do I delegate this? How do I delegate that? And that's awesome. You know, leverage and delegate and all that stuff. Great. Go do your thing. Everybody operates differently. You know, maybe that's your thing is delegating stuff. Great. Awesome. I delegate plenty of stuff. Um, But I know the things that I want to do, you know, um, the things I'm willing to do and I make it easy. Like the property management, so easy. I could have a hundred, 200 properties managing. I got about 30 something right now. Like it's nothing, you know, they call me, I call a contractor, they'll text me or whatever. Like it's not a big deal. So I think people just make big deals out of nothing and then act like it's something, Oh God, I got to get out of here. There are things you need to delegate, right? You're not going to get to a million bucks a year if you don't have an assistant handling everything on the back end. Putting stuff in MLS, setting up all the showing for agents wanting to show your listings, setting up showings when you want to show property, uh, you know, getting pictures done, transaction coordination, like all that stuff needs to be delegated 100%. So I'm not saying don't delegate. Uh, I'm just making a point that I'm willing to do stuff, whatever. I told... uh. Who was it? I don't know if it was Joshua Smith or somebody the other day. I was like, if I lost everything today, like I'm ready right this second to go hop on a roof and start laying shingles. Right now, zero issues. Ready to go. Ready to get on a ladder and go on a roof and start nailing shingles. Ready. No problems. You know, a lot of people are like, I won't even, I won't go work at, you know, McDonald's. I'm too good. It's like, I see people lose their job and then they don't even work for like a year and a half. Oh, I'm trying to do this and that. Like, dude, I would have been sweeping floor. Like I would have been cutting. Like they're, <laughs> it's insane. Right. It's insane. Thank cool. You. What else you guys got? I got time for one more. Hi, good morning. Uh, so, so, so these investment properties that you're currently managing, how do you source and, and find, or, or try to, I guess, differentiate one property from the next like, like is there a formula is there a sheet that you use to see what's the cap rate for each house or you just like what's the formula for trying to source to each property from the next they just fall in my lap and i decide if it's a good deal or not i look at what the monthly payment is i look at the cash i'm gonna have to put into it you know like the new constructions for example i have to put about eighty thousand down and my payment's about sixteen fifty, and I can rent them out for twenty four hundred. So what's that? It's about seven fifty a month cash flow. So I'm putting eighty thousand down cash, and I'm making about nine, a little less than nine, so about eighty five hundred or so a year or something off that. No maintenance because these are brand new homes. No maintenance for you know five, ten years, whatever. Um, so that's eighty five hundred on an eighty thousand dollar investment so that's more than 10 percent a year back on my cash then on top of that it's paying itself off on top of that it's appreciating these homes have already they've already raised the price like six thousand since i put these under um i just closed on them like in the, like yeah i'm closing on two 
uh, in two weeks. And then I closed on three already. But anyway, like that's just one example. A cool thing about those is they're new. So the insurance is lower because they're built to better standards. And I went through the builder on the uh, loan. So the mortgage rate's 5.9 on an investment property. And they're paying 5,000 my closing costs. No maintenance for five years. It's like, for me, it's a no brainer. I'm, let me, I was like, let me buy five of them. That's a great, those are great investments. And the thing is about it is that anything that cash flows in this high interest rate environment now is a true winner because although rents may be coming down a tad or leveling out or re you know, finding a, a new floor, um, they're not going to go to zero. Okay. I mean the, on these deals, even if rent went down 20%, I'm still good, but rents, I don't believe rent's going to go down 20%. Like in the hardest hit cities, like Phoenix rents down like 6% year over year. You know, that's the hard, that's some of the hardest hit cities. It's going to level out somewhere. My point is, is that rents are, will continue to rise once they find that leveling out and all the dust clears. They're going to continue to go up two, three percent a year. All right. If rates go down over the next, say, five years, OK, and we refinance at a point cheaper. Now where our cash flows even more. So if your gap between your your expenses and your your rent is X, as time goes on, your monthly expenses are going to go down if you refinance. And your rent's going to go up. So that gap's going to get bigger over time. So if it cash flows now, it's it's a it's a winner, right? Um, that little two-bedroom, I flipped properties with two other guys. And this one was one that fits my portfolio. So I'm a third partner on the flip. So we bought it, fixed it up. And then I was like, I'll buy it. So I already have automatic equity because I'm a third partner on the flip. And I just bought me and the other guy, me and one of the other partners, we bought the other guy out. So it's like, I don't go like out looking for deals. I just kind of like things just fall in my lap and I'm like, okay, you know, this is a good one. That three acres I got under contract to build 30 units. That's my buddy. He listed it. And I was like, man, if you find something to build, build some apartments, I want to build some apartments. He's like, oh, I got this thing over here. I was like, damn. So, you know, it's a good deal. And um, so it just depends. I think after you do it for a while, you kind of realize what a good deal is and stuff. You know, Grant Cardone likes that 1% rule, like 1% of what you pay for it is the monthly payment. I've seen that on some things like uh, we did a commercial deal and we paid 450 and we rented it out for 4,000. We could have got 4,500. We'll, we'll be, we'll definitely be able to when the lease is up, probably be able to get 5,000, but that was a good little 1% rule deal. And that <laughs> the numbers work when you get something for 1%, it rents for 1% of the purchase price. That is a winner right there. Um, this two bedroom we're buying for 195. We'll run it out for like 1500. So it's not quite a 1%. These uh, DR Horton homes, we bought them for like three, three fifty. We're running them out for like 2,400 or so. That's not a 1%, you know, but the numbers still work really great. So I wouldn't just hang my hat on that. You have to look at the whole deal. Cash up front, you know, return on, on that investment plus your depreciation, appreciation, and debt buy down. I mean, I'll tell you my my plan real quick, and then I got to roll. I got to go catch a flight. Um, I'm My goal is to buy a property a month for five years. That's 60 properties. I've already got about 40, so that'll be 100. If they average 500 apiece, that's 50 million. If I take another 20 years to pay it all off, and it more than doubles in that 20 years, which is pretty conservative, it'll be 100 million bucks worth of paid off real estate, probably bringing in like two, 300,000 a month. That's just a little thing on the side I can do. So like all the brand building to create these different revenue, you know, avenues, that's just to get enough money to buy a property a month, right? And try to build this, you know, 100, 200, 300 million dollar real estate portfolio kind of just on the side while I'm trying to build these other businesses. Got it? Cool, cool. Anything else I can do for you guys today? So no. I um uh, oh, sorry. Ahead, no. Um, what are, so in, in Alabama, how, like, what are the, um, eviction laws? Like how it's quick really good. I can get somebody out in about 45 days. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little bit of a process, but I can get them out in about 45 days. I can, I 45 days for me following the first thing, I can have the cops there in about 45 days to remove them from the property. So it's pretty good. Ricky, I have a question about prospecting, um, and you taught me this. Uh, I want you to 
tell everybody else about the rejection part. You know, when rejection they get rejected, is just, then uh, what? Well, rejection is just, again, them telling you what they want to do. What you call rejection. Get, somebody give me an example of like a rejection or an, uh, or an objection, you know, you're having trouble with. I'm not Why looking to buy right now. Go ahead, What's John. that? I'm not looking to buy or sell. Okay, great. Do you have an agent that you would work with when you do? Uh, Yeah. Okay, so great. Who is it? Uh, John Doe. Cool. John Doe's a great agent. You're in good hands. Listen, I'd still love the opportunity to stay in touch with you. Is that all right? That's fine. Cool. What's a good yeah. email? See, you. they're telling you they don't want to do anything right now. Awesome. Go ahead, Renee. What was yours? Uh, I had a, a woman who said she didn't want to sell until um, her daughter graduates from high school. So three Awesome. Years. When's your daughter graduating? Where'd she go to high school at? Cool. I, I went there I too. Mean, I graduated in eighty nine. How you, you know, like? Is is Miss is Miss uh, Stewart still there? Yeah, you know? she is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, you, you that's awesome. You want to sell when your daughter graduates? Amazing. You know, like that's exactly Renee. What we're looking for is people that are telling us that kind of stuff. Then yeah. we go deeper and deeper and deeper. Right? Do you have an agent you're going to work with whenever your daughter graduates and you guys move on? Do you have somebody in mind, an agent that you're going to work with on that? Because I'd love the opportunity to interview for the job, work with you, however you want to, however you want to word it, right? But I would love to work with you. You know, that is how I worded it. I I yeah. have a son that's the same age, so we we mm -hmm. got in a good conversation about it. Yeah, so, and then just identifying if they have an agent, and then you know identifying yourself as their agent, right? And then putting together a plan. You know, it's like, OK, when she graduates, you guys going to hang out in the house and kind of enjoy it for another couple months before you get serious about mo moving. Do you want to move immediately? Right. I mean, there's more to the story. And unless you know all these details, you can't help them. You know, do you want to hang out there another year after? I mean, they might want to hang out in their house and enjoy it for a year after they graduate and then move. We don't know until we ask. They want to move them. They might want to move immediately. They might want to already have a house done, ready to to literally like move day she moves out. They've already closed on their house and, and they just move over and then put that house in the market because they can buy before they sell. Some people have to sell before they buy, but we don't know if they do because we haven't asked. We don't know what their real plan is until you understand what their plan is, what they're wanting to do, why they're wanting to do it, how they're wanting to do it. You can't help them. And that's called, ladies and gentlemen, being a professional. Cool. I got a roll, guys. Enjoyed it. Ricky, thank you so thank much. You very much. Thanks, Ricky. Thank you guys. Thank you. Good. Thank you.